All right, so uh, this this fucking show turned into basically a uh, show a movie. Yeah, it was great. The way through, it uh, was real good. The uh, the alien through the, the alien plot continued, and um, but before that, I guess uh, we had pig moles and uh, stupid jealousy subplot. We had um, the Loch Ness monster, who was a like a, a lizard or like a. It was a noodle. It was with a leg. It was a noodle, and it involved a corrupt scientist who was going to sell the baby, and then. Um. I don't remember competition. Oh. Uh, I don't even remember bug out. Well, bug out was the one with the termites. Oh right, right, right. What was competition? It wasn't the it wasn't the fake Godzilla. So was an early frost a fake Godzilla? Because that doesn't make sense either. No. I, I'm looking it up. God damn it! But yeah, um, Deadlock was entertaining because Godzilla freed the baby, and they're like, Godzilla made a moral decision. And it's like. Did it? I, mm, I don't know. It's not clear. I mean, they're like, well, maybe he just decided to stick together with the other reptile because that's what they do. Yeah, I don't know. It's very confusing. Okay, let's see. Was competition the bat? Oh, uh, nice. Wait. It's uh, <laughs> wait, there it is. Let's see. Trip to Japan. It's the one with Mechacon. Oh, and right, the, right, right. And the, the, the snake. snake. The snake that shoots sticky white stuff. Yeah, apparently that's episode 15, according to this. I don't know why they're different. I don't know why Wikipedia's got them in different orders. Oh, it's just it's just in a different order? Not Okay, well, either way... Oh, it, I see, because the, that's when it aired. It aired after. So these aren't actually in order. That's weird. That is weird. Great. Awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mecha Kong uh, was fun. It, 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 was a, it was a baboon, and then Godzilla roasted it, and it turned out to be Mechana Kong, and we were like, oh my god, this is dumb. And he was being controlled by, uh, by a Japanese lady, so... Yeah. And, it was, uh... and and Craven basically got the equivalent of a date with her or something at the end. It was weird. And then the episode ended and it didn't matter. No, it never comes up again. Uh, Bug Out is... Uh... There were some big old termites oh, down there my... in the rainforest and they were just chomping on them trees. Yeah, and Godzilla was going through a phase and uh, what what's-her-face reporter lady accidentally talked about stuff that she shouldn't have because it was with the conversation with with Nico and whatnot. And so he's mad at her for a while and then um and then they blow up the termites. They destroy that like Bug Out was the first time where we saw like actual they were killing things. Yeah, it was a good time. Good yeah time for everybody involved. Yep. Uh and then we begin Monster War, which is basically a Showa movie. Yeah, they bring back all the heavy hitters. The weird... The first monster that, <laughs> yeah, that, thing. that ate all the squids. Uh, the worm. The worm. The giant bee. The bat. Who was well, no, the bat was new. The bat was introduced in this uh, thing. And um, basically, the aliens are making everyone fight so that they don't work together. And then... Um, and then we find out that uh, Redhead Lady is helping the military research uh, the alien ship. And everyone gets mad about that. And um, and then they go chasing after a bat. And not much happens with that. And then slowly but surely they begin to take over the monsters. And they reveal that they have turned the original Godzilla into a cyborg. A cyborg zombie. Yes. With rocket launchers and atomic breath of its own. 
as well as a reflector dish that literally only seems to work on sound because we never see it do anything else. It also had whirring noises every time it moved. Which is dumb because there was no, like, mechan there was, like, mechanical armor on its legs, but not, like, joints, so... It didn't really make sense. It they, was the arm. It was the, uh, for some the reason, right they, arm. They just were like... They replaced it with a shitty robot arm that was, like, crappy looking and wasn't armored at all. It was like, why? Because. Reasons. Either Shut up. Either way. Eat your heart out, Kiri. You weren't the first. Either way, Cyborgzilla is lame. And yeah. Gun, and, um... And, it, and, and, and so, as we continue watching... The uh, the two guys who were infected by the aliens, yeah, the two other scientists from uh, the Leviathan episode, they 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 are gaining like weird like vein stuff, and they're clearly controlling everyone, and they start talking to everyone psychically, and they have Christmas lights in their eyes, and uh, and we watch with. <laughs> With great joy, as they have begun to mutate <laughs> into the weird bug men that we saw in the original Alien episode. And their first reveal, we died. <laughs> because it was unbelievably hilarious. And it only got funnier. <laughs> as every shot with them is incredibly shitty. And they're basically just, like, slowly moved up and down. They bob up and down, and they communicate psychically, and half the time their mouths are open, and we just want them to start, like, drooling because they're, yeah, they're dumb. They're just dumb. Uh, <laughs> as they talk to each other. And, uh, yeah, no, it's 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 just magnificent and amazing. And we basically watch as, the, uh, as Monster War turns into Destroy All Monsters. Yeah, they, they, they break up the same stuff as they broke in the, in the movie. Yep, yeah, uh, everyone goes to their respective city to wreck shop, and we watch as the uh, the Arc de Triomphe gets destroyed, and the Eiffel Tower, and uh, Godzilla breaks... Uh, Godzilla specifically targets Lincoln. Yeah. In Lincoln he, Memorial. He wants the chair. Uh, they send Cyborg Godzilla to Japan. Of course. And uh, he doesn't destroy any memorable monuments because apparently the writers of this show didn't know any monuments in Japan. They, they, they had him on the street. There was no Tokyo Tower. There was no, no castle to be destroyed. No pagodas. Just the streets, random streets of Tokyo. It was yeah, like... Yeah, you know, the... the, the, the... The very famous streets of Tokyo. My favorite scene from him fighting in Tokyo was when he blew up those helicopters and they instantaneously ejected. <laughs> no no human death. It's great. I mean, they can't die. It's a kid's show. Clearly. But for the children. Anyway, uh, so there's this whole rigmarole where they're, everyone who's not mind-controlled is trying to uh, sabotage the mind control stuff and they're firing tachyons into space and they're calling down the invasion and um and it's unclear how exactly they begin to break the monsters free of their control but they do uh they uh scramble one of the satellites or something it's it's unclear it's kind of just like oh no they shoot it He's well like, but yeah, that, that happens later though well, there's a, there's a first God. satellite that scrambles it or whatever, and then they blow up another satellite. Well, yeah, but to break the the people out of the mind control. But, but at some point, they uh, they break Godzilla out, and they slowly break the other monsters out. And it's just very weird and confusing. And for some reason, they decide to try and lock them up next to the radar dish, which is really dumb. But anyway, uh, these weren't the smartest aliens. No, they weren't. They they had dumb looks on their faces and were clearly incredibly stupid. So. Slowly but surely, this group of morons uh, manages to break down their entire plan because everything they make is made of glass. And uh, well, it has to look nice. And and French Lay uses hypnosis, which is dumb. Yeah, to stop the mind control, which is dumb. It's brilliant. It's very dumb. Anyway, uh, and like the, the the details aren't important all that's important is that every time the aliens show up they look terrible and hilarious and, and god there was just this one scene where they just like slid them that was just <laughs> i was it was just a wonderful time all around i think the best part was uh so after they turn this war around mm -hmm. they're like 
uh, they're, they're calling for a full retreat, and then their necks just extend out, and they <laughs> they're around. like, no! And their they heads... whip around, and they're like, they're calling for, for a retreat! <laughs> no! And it looks just as bad as it did last time, and it's just beautiful. And then they manage to completely defeat them, they steal a ship, and they start blowing shit up, and um, they almost get sent into space, but uh, Nick, Nick, Nico remembers that he pushed a button that he didn't push, and they escape. On an escape pod. That's, yeah. that that's it was, gross. That was launched by a different man mm-hmm. who was also not defeated. He's still alive. We never saw him. He might have blown up. He might have found it and then blew up. I don't know. I haven't but seen he, anything He went else. into a green door and we never saw him again. Mm-hmm. So he could still be out there. The aliens could come back. So that's still a possible plot point. But regardless, uh, the, the humans start reverting back the, the two guys who turned into bug monsters start reverting back, and I was just like, this is dumb. They should have stayed. Because they when when the aliens left, they just kind of, like, fell over. <laughs> <laughs> and then they slowly started to turn back into people, and I was like, this is dumb. Yeah, it was all all really dumb. Yep. And then, uh... And then, finally, after that, we move on to the, uh, the chameleon Godzilla, who's pretending to be Godzilla and looks really shitty. He hides it in front of a building, and they don't see him. It's great. It's awesome. It's perfect. It looks like he came out of the building, like as <laughs> if it were like a thing. And uh, it turns out it's Frost again. He's a jackass. Winters. Winters. Winter. Well, a wealthy Mick Good-looking. Yeah, he, he's he's a loser. Uh, he, he got out of jail for... Good behavior? It was a six-month parole, I guess. I don't know. And he's yeah. like, he just immediately got back on his bullshit, and he's like, well, I made a Godzilla, but he looks like he's got a hand for a face, and there's a, a mouth in his chest. Also, maybe people will buy it. Yeah, no, totally. It's Everybody's going to want one of these. From the, I was, yeah, no, everyone, I'm going to kill Godzilla, and everyone's going to line up to buy my chameleonzillas. And then animated Jean Reno shows up. Yes, Philippe is back. Apparently not Jean Philippe as much as I wanted him to be. I kept telling you he wasn't. I know, but it, it, with all the Jeans flying around, <laughs> I was kind of hoping. Regardless, uh, he was not chewing gum as he should have been. Well, he wasn't pretending to be an American. <laughs> he was being a French. Yeah, Frenchman. I know. But re- either way, it was still with a rocket launcher. Yeah, to had, take out Godzilla, and then he's just like he had the, he had the bio weapon from '84, and then he's just like, eh, whatever. I'll just shoot the chameleon. I don't, I don't care. I've only got the one. And then, and then the chameleon gets medused. Yeah, it just falls apart. It was a good time. Uh, it was nice to see Philippe again. He's a good guy. Uh, and then, and and then we go to the grossest episode ever. Oh, it was beautiful. It was super gross. It was a gamma all over again. Mm, yeah, so Godzilla's fighting a giant bacteria that's basically just a... Uh, uh, it's a borb with tentacles. It's a, it's Borbalante. Because <laughs> uh, it also shoots green goo. And uh, it gets... Uh, what's his face sick? Uh, Craven. Craven. Keep keep having to remember like Craven the Hunter. And I'm like, that's so not him. Oh, but- I think of, uh, of Wes Craven. The, the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street guy. Even better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Craven gets infected with uh, meningitis, and so does Godzilla. Yeah, and so they're like, why don't we take the magic school bus ride into Godzilla's bloodstream? We'll just shoot right past his heart, go up to his brain, and start shooting bacteria. It'll be fun. It'll, It'll be, be great. For the kids. And then immediately they get attacked. The sub gets uh, latched onto by all the mini bacterias, and they like they like eat through it. And then they puncture his veins into his stomach because that makes sense. And um, yeah, they give basically give Godzilla an ulcer, and they just dump a bunch of blood into his stomach, which would probably cause him to vomit. But then they shoot the vein wall with like a laser, a laser gun. But, but then it like bwah, it gets like way wider for some reason and never does that again. Well, they put it on a wide shot. Clearly, they like, have a spread shot. It's like you, like you contra. Know, you know, on on like a a water hose or a <laughs> do they put their thumb over it? No, no, no. Like uh, the nozzle, you, the, you twist it. Yeah, yeah, sure. You, you go from like a jet to wide to the wide spray to with soaker, like, like a power washer. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, clearly. And then they're like, all right, we're going to take a trip to the heart 
we've got five minutes to get to his brain. And I'm like, that's bad. Foreign things in your bloodstream getting to your heart uh, can kill you. And they do rev they do say that. They say if they hit any of the uh, valves in his heart, it could cause a heart attack. And then they proceed to run straight in. Oh, they run. kick right through it. And I was just like, really, guys? But luckily, uh, Godzilla is much hardier, pun intended, than... Uh, I mean, he's probably got like eight hearts in there. Might as well. But anyway, they, they manage to get to the brain, and they start shooting everything, and uh, the, they're like, watch where you shoot if you could cause paralysis or even death. And then uh, French is like, I never miss. And then uh, Tatopoulos also starts shooting, and I'm like, you're not a professional. And, and the best part <laughs> is they weren't missing per se, but the beams were going through the bacteria. Yes, uh, so there should have been collateral damage. They were definitely exiting the bacteria. Either way, it was dumb, but they managed to solve the problem, and then Godzilla starts to wake up. And they and crawl out his nose. God, it's gross. They, they are... crawl through the, the river of boogers. Oh, it's just a river of snot. And uh, Godzilla gets ready to shoot his power breath, so they duck into the snot, which I didn't realize. They never showed the power breath coming out of his nose. But... No, they didn't. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, it, it just... And then what was even better was uh, when they're like, uh-oh, we're disturbing his nasal cavity after the bat... Uh, uh, Borvalante tries to infect uh, the local water it, reservoir. It tries to pull a megalon and, cl and climb into the dam. Yes, uh, but luckily Godzilla recovers and pulls him down and goes, fuck you, and roasts him after uh, Craven uh, drives the, anti the special antibiotic into its mouth. Yeah, the barrel of antibiotics. Which was just open for some reason. Which should have been spilling everywhere. And, and Borbalante is just like, mmm, that looks tasty. Oh, shit! Oh, it's no. It's dissolving me. Oh, no. And then Godzilla roasts the rest of it. And, uh... Yeah. Godzilla sneezes them out. In a big ball of green goo. And then he sneezes on Craven, and then we all share a laugh. It's a good time to be had by all, and not super gross, possibly forecasting a snot attack that no one wants. And then we move on to the spider episode. The obligatory spider episode. There has to be a spider monster. We have to introduce the spider. So it's, it's this island that we're just kind of bumming around on for some reason. There's a military base, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. One guy gets swarmed by, like, a thousand spiders. A thousand, like, I don't know, fist-sized spiders. They're, they're, they're clearly black widows, but albino. And, um, and they're like, and, and they just bite this guy a bunch, even though it was black widows that size would probably kill people. Uh, so the, the team gets called in. And then they find even bigger spiders. Yes, there is an entire colony of spiders. And they're like, okay, so here's our options. One, we torch the island. And they're like, we can't do that because there's a military base. And then they're like, good reason. Second, or our second option, Gas. a lot of bug spray. Gas the spiders, which is the plan they decide to go with. Until they, uh, the, the team realizes that they are extremely resistant to most uh, pesticides for whatever reason. And they're like, this isn't going to work. And they try and tell them that. And they're like, no, it's working. They're running away. And Nico's like, that, that doesn't mean it's working. And then they're like, oh, no, they're attacking. And then the big spiga shows up. Oh, it just the sprayed. The big hairy one. With, oh, it's a nice With wig. double butt sprayers. Double butt sprayers and a nice wig. <laughs> and it just starts spraying up the place with white stuff. Brazzers logos all over the place. <laughs> and that's when uh and we forgot that Craven turned himself orange uh with uh sunscreen. The sunscreen bug spray uh, it, combination. Apparently it was a reaction which I think it was just orange paint. Yeah, might have been. So uh, the other thing we missed is uh, Craven at this point is now building a device to call Godzilla and send him messages mm -hmm. so they can quote unquote control him a little bit. Or like they would give him complex commands, I believe was the eventual goal. Yeah, like playing tennis. Sure. And so they, they call Godzilla in. Godzilla bites off one of the, the legs yep. of the big Spiga. And then he just kind of just buzzes off. Well, he gets he gets webbed against the wall, and he tries. The Craven tries to send him a command to 
do something and then Godzilla just kind of like weirdly waddles off and uh and then the spider the spider retreats and they're like we have to do something and they accidentally uh knock out one of knock they accidentally knock over the jar with one of the one of the babies in it and then uh Randy Randy catches it in some at a jar with some local flowers which then paralyze it and they're like oh why are these spigas not resistant to this native plant? And then they don't answer that, and they're just like, go collect a whole bunch and then fill your helmets with them. Yes, and they bring a bunch. We're going to make a bomb. We're going to make a flower bomb. It's going to be a real paddle storm. Yes. Paddle blizzard. Paul and Puff. Paul and Puff. Because it's the Paul that knocks them out. Yeah, whatever. It's paddles. Either way. Uh, They make a... They make a... They make a flower bomb, and they're like, we gotta deliver it to... To the queen. Right in her face. The... And her wig. Yes. And so, they come, they bring the bomb, and they're like, we have to get it before... We have to get it at night, because that's when they make their nest and whatnot. And so, they get the bomb in, and then the spy goes show up. And I don't remember anything of significance happening. Uh, they call Godzilla in again with the device, and then... And then he shows up to start fighting, and then... Uh, Nick gets one of the uh, the hazmat helmets. He's like, I'm just gonna go detonate the bomb by myself. Bye, see you guys later. Don't know why he needed the helmet, but whatever. And then he gets bit up. Yep. And uh, then the bomb goes off. Killing this or paralyzing them, I don't, I don't know. It's, 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 it's unclear. I and don't then know. Godzilla just kind of leaves again, and we're all like, yay, we did it, congratulations. And then Time he, to leave. And then uh, he, yeah, and, and then he's like, I can give him a command to roar, and he does it, and Godzilla roars, and then he dives back into the ocean, and... He's like, see, I told you guys I could do that, and then... The wave hits him. And then we all laugh, share, and we all share in our good fortune of... This finally being over. Yes, we finally reached the end of this disc. So, aside from the Godzilla tactical surgery episode, which was gross, I think this might have been a better, uh, better time than the first. Honestly, first ten episodes. Honestly, Monster War just kind of. It was just. It was just a. It was just a good time, and it. It had a decent build up, that. Um, we knew the aliens were gonna resurface. I didn't expect them to be defeated just because a few monsters came back, but they were. And, uh... Yeah, so... Uh, going back to Monster War real quick. Mm-hmm. They brought the giant rat back from that episode. Yes. Did the rat go anywhere? No! <laughs> I don't remember seeing the rat at all. I think they forgot about it. Did they go, oh, wait a minute, a 15-foot rat? That that ain't gonna do diddly. Yeah, no. Just put that back in the box. It's not worth it. We only have one of them. We don't even have the horde. It's not not worth anything. Just just forget it. Send it back to New York. Like, yeah, no, it was... that, That was really dumb. But regardless, uh, yeah, Monster War was a treat as... Uh, the lazy animation just just it added it added to as I love that we watched as the budget started to die as people started to like squish and morph <laughs> and clearly they were saving budget by making the aliens just communicate telepathically and just have their mouths open half the time and just like slide yeah just and, and move the, them on the y axis or the giant hornet that came over and then literally <laughs> rotated and left as if it was a helicopter and pivot yep good good times uh yeah no it was a surprisingly entertaining time this continues to be higher quality in terms of actual story enjoyment than power hour Power Hour was funny because it was terrible, and then that wore thin. This is... It's got aspects of some quality that are okay, and the story is entertaining enough that it kind of... As long as they stay away from the romance. The romance subplots are always awful. Because, man, that, that... 
the chemistry between Nico and Audrey is the worst. They uh, their morphed personalities for the cartoon series doesn't really. One episode she's mad at him. The next episode he's mad at her, and then they and just keep going, and it sucks every time. It it's so bad that we just stop seeing Audrey after a little bit. Yeah, she think, wasn't involved in Monster War, I don't think, at all. No, I think the last time we saw her in this uh, this session was Bug Out. So the fourth episode? I think we saw, her for, we saw her for Freeze and then Bug Out. Yeah, I don't know if she was in an early Frost. She might have reported on it, but I don't uh, recall. I don't, no, because that started with the Minnesotans. Oh, yeah, you're right. That was entertaining. Uh, but yeah, no, it's... Um, she continues to be a terrible character, who for some reason is being kind of thrust at us as being extremely greedy and career-driven. Well, you know, nice guys finish last. That's what they said in the movie. It is. That's the one line they remembered from the movie. And yet she isn't clearly hasn't learned her lesson from the last time she did this stupid crap. But regardless, uh, we will see you guys for the next ten episodes. Oh boy. Hope, see you tomorrow. Hope it's not terrible. It will be. I know.